Biobalance HealthCast, episode 115, Erectile Dysfunction from a Medical Perspective. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. I've been watching a lot of ads for products for ED. And I remember Bob Dole came out and was marketing some kind of product for ED. Must and be profitable. <laughs> well, I think it is, and, and I think it is because more and more men, as they age, encounter difficulties with that. Okay. So we thought it would be productive today to spend some time talking about the physiological issues or physical causes of ED or erectile dysfunction and some of the psychological components of ED, and if we have enough time to get there, some of the treatment uh, propositions for ED. Okay. So for the next uh, podcast or two, we're going to be talking about issues around erectile dysfunction uh, in men and the impact of that on the men and on their relationships. Because we've really shortchanged the we're male part of the male yeah. part about of sex. Because we've talked a lot about testosterone and women. Right. And in this case, testosterone is very important for for uh, erectile dysfunction as well. Now, most of the things that are on television are talking about function and just medication that helps function but not treating the base problem. There's several problems that can cause ED and primarily what I deal with is testosterone issues. So it's, it's much, if you're part of the pun, it's a much larger problem <laughs> than just blood flow to the penis that enables the erection. Right. You know that, that whole vascular uh, constriction issue is an issue and it's a medical issue but there are antecedent problems or causes mm -hmm. that lead to that so you can't just treat that. And you uh, can't just treat te with testosterone. What the, the l way I treat is in the order of the, of the um, etiology or the cause of the problem. The overwhelming cause that happens with most men is that their testosterone level drops. So if there's no gas in the car, the car won't run. Well, the testosterone level is what helps vessels dilate, okay. is what helps release nitric acid is what helps oxytocin be released. So this primary problem is usually testosterone. Instead of working your way back from the symptom and treating with something that helps dilation of the blood vessels, we're tr starting at the very top. What's the one thing that usually is low and can be treated with one thing that can fix everything? And that's testosterone. So testosterone is the primary place that I start, because I'd like to start at the etiology or the reason most of the people have ED. However, there are other reasons people have ED. So if I treat them with testosterone and their level's 1,200 and they still have erectile dysfunction, then it's got to be something else. So I've ruled out just the hormonal causes, and then they feel better. They always have a relief of all the other symptoms of testosterone deprivation meaning they have a better attitude, they, their muscles are stronger, they, they can think better, they sleep better, they have a better attitude, but they still don't have this fixed. Mm -hmm. So then we go to the next step, and, and the next problem is the narrowing of the blood vessels. Now as we get older, ED is a problem of aging, and as we get older, we lay down cholesterol plaque on our vessels, most of us do, some earlier than others. And as that plaque is laid down, on the blood vessels, it narrows the blood vessels, not just in your heart, which is what we sound like we're always concerned about, but it's also in the blood vessels of your pelvis, which is the blood vessels that allow you to have an erection. So if your heart's getting atherosclerosis, so are your pelvic vessels. Wow. And so those vessels don't dilate like they used to to br bring the blood flow down to the pelvis. So I saw a video one time of Michael DeBakey uh, the heart surgeon doing heart surgery mm -hmm. and he had taken an artery and detached it from the heart and took a pair of forceps and just pulled all this goo like a long string yep. of goo out of the artery mm -hmm. and they were asking him on the on the video <laughs> how do you know when you've gotten it and he said you'll see and then all of a sudden blood just started shooting all the way where, where it was right. like dripping out of the thing the the flow was such that it just took <laughs> off 
I've is never there, seen that. Is there a process for for that with the pelvis? Are those vessels too thin to clean that way? Do they have to be cleaned some other way? Is there a reversal? Well, in general, we don't clean the vessels in the heart the way he did it's, it. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. mean, ba basically... Hook them up to a Hoover. You, you don't do that. You yeah. just take out that piece of vessel because even though you can clean out all the goo out of the, out of the vessel, uh -huh. it's now been damaged. It's been invaded and weakened by that plaque. So that piece of vessel in a heart, when they call it bypass, they take out that piece, throw it out, yeah. take a, a vein, vein which is leg, not yeah. a, a, a artery, take a vein out of your leg, put it in the place of it. So it's literally replaced. Okay. Now in the pelvis, if somebody has terrible con constriction of the vessels that go to the legs and to the pelvis, uh -huh. then they have claudication, they have pain when they walk. And they have ter they have terrible nails, cold feet, no hair on their legs, you know, blue toes. So, so all these visible. So all of these visible things, and that's right. that's the severest form when when they have that. If that's the case, you know that the pelvis has constriction and that you're not going to have an erection. Yeah. There's and the only way around that is to bypass those vessels. Same thing. Okay. You take a vein and you bypass. It's called uh, a fat. Uh, a fempop bypass. It's a long time since med school when I did those, uh -huh. but a fempop bypass where they go around the old vessel. And do they take other blood vessels of your own and, and yes. replace, or do they get them they from now, a cadaver? They now or they have cadaver, and they now have um, synthetic. Yeah. But and they have animal va uh, vessels they use. But there's that depends on your surgeon and what he prefers. And it's a or pretty she extreme prefers. process. It, that's a huge process, and that's not usually what I see. Okay. Because. Yeah, the there, more common there thing. we're talking about something really severe. Yeah. ED is the least of your problems. You're worrying about keeping your legs. Right. Okay, so yeah. that's huge. What we're talking about is, if I, I wish I could just tell men, you know, when I say you're going to have a heart attack if your cholesterol's up and, and, and you're going to have heart failure, and they don't yeah. care about that, but if I tell them they have ED because of the very same things, they go, oh, no, I'll, I'll do whatever you tell me. Yeah. You know, so I wish I could get... All of the doctors talking about cholesterol to tell the men that not just their heart, that's just life, mm -hmm. by golly. It's, mm -hmm. it's their pelvis because that's more important to them somehow. Mm -hmm. And they, they need to have an erection so to make them feel normal, and I understand that. That's just something that cholesterol and inflammation together in your vessels It's causes. amazing to me how often we come back to not, not so much the difference between life and death, but to a discussion about the quality of life. Right. And how, how you live your life and how you have the things in your life that you want to have in your life. You may take the risk to die with with some equanimity, some balance. Like if you're going to smoke, yeah. then you're going to die sooner. Right. But but they don't say if you're smoking, then you're going to have ED sooner or you're not going to be able to have sex sooner. Yes. Because that increases the cholesterol uh, that's laid down in your vessels and it constricts the vessels. So those are those are things, that's a blood flow issue when they say, Oh, Viagra is treating a blood flow issue. Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about. Viagra dilates the blood vessels. However, if they're so constricted that they can't dilate anymore, then but, but even again, Viagra if, won't work. If they just go and get Viagra, which, again, you see all these ads on the Internet and on television, buy it from Canada, buy herbal, you know, That's because they're trying to avoid, and, avoiding the price, but now it's generic. And the prescription and so on yeah. of, of having to go to a doctor to get it. But, but if the, the data suggests that men who just take Viagra or some other derivative, Cialis mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, as a solution to their problem, after a, a few months, quit taking it. I mean, it, it will help them get an erection, but it doesn't help them have sex. It doesn't help them have orgasm. It doesn't help the quality of the experience improve. It just makes them mechanically receptive, and that isn't what they want. Well, they do want that, they want but that. they want everything that isn't else too. That's all that they want, right? That's why and I by itself, that doesn't do it. And that's why I start with testosterone. Yes. Because testosterone's the first level, and sometimes people get testosterone and still don't have the erection they want. Yes. So then I have to add the Viagra to help dilate the vessels if they're able to dilate. Mm -hmm. But honestly, there are some people who have smoked or had terrible genetics. That's not your fault. You can live a great lifestyle and have terrible lipids. They could be very high and you could lay down goo all over your vessels and you will still have ED even if you were good about taking care of yourself. So, you know, it's not like I'm blaming people. It's just that if you have a chance, 
you know, keep your cholesterol low, exercise and stop smoking. So cholesterol inflammation? Inflammation is, um, is needed for cholesterol to actually stick to your vessels. There is always cholesterol in your blood. We need cholesterol. So what are the things that cause inflammation in the pelvic system? Obesity, smoking, uh, lack of exercise, okay. alcohol, um, the fats that come, the unhealthy fats. So they're the fats that are in, in um, beef and in, in animal fat, mm -hmm. okay, lard, mm -hmm. things like that and in um, saturated fats. My grandmother, Those all my grandmother cause, cooked with lard. In, I know, that all causes inflammation. I mean, if it wasn't fried, it wasn't cooked. I know. Yeah. So inflammation, so, so we come at it that one way, change your lifestyle. Yeah. We come at it another way, and that is give testosterone, which is an anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So we lower inflammatory markers by giving testosterone. So that's two ways, and I'm talking about testosterone, not oral, and I'm not talking about um, synthetic, I'm talking about natural testosterone, not taken orally. Those are the only ones that will do, that's the only kind that will do this. Not taken orally. Right, so pure testosterone taken as a shot every day or a pellet every six months mm -hmm. is the only way you can do this. The shots that are given every two weeks, those aren't, na those aren't bioidentical, and they will not s slow down. Reduce the inflammation, inflammation. and clear the Right. right, so they're not going to help your health. So, the, so let's go back. So we need to have good erectile function. Mm -hmm. You need testosterone, and you need to have uh, open blood vessels. But so, the testosterone helps with the the opening of the blood vessels and the erectile function. But it also helps with things like oxytocin and mm -hmm. arousal and desire and focus right. that complement the whole experience. Right, so to make it more than just a me mechanical release. Yes. But still, some people feel something's better than nothing. Right. And I understand that if you can't get to the testosterone portion, the ED drugs do help function. Right. But what happens if we give you testosterone and we give you, and, and you still need Viagra to dilate and then it's not work, things aren't working. Yeah. So the next step in both diagnosis and, and trial, and you're thinking, oh, this is trial and error, but it's, it's specific trial and error. You're going from the most likely to the next most right. likely to the least likely. We check for diabetes. Now, diabetes is a whole different animal. Diabetes gives you erectile dysfunction not only by adding to high cholesterol and uh, atherosclerosis, but it also damages the small blood vessels. So not a big, a vein and artery this big don't go into the, into the penis. They have very sm smaller arteries and veins, and then they need all those little vessels to then dilate. Those capillaries that get blood out like yeah. to the surface of the skin and, and those so are, And tiny vessels are the ones that are damaged with diabetes, with high blood sugar levels. And Another that's why reason, when you go to the doctor and they're checking you for diabetes, as you get older, they check your feet, they check your legs, they're looking for neuropathy, they're looking for blood flow to the skin, mm -hmm. and, and that's all those that smaller tells, vessels. Right, and that tells them how bad your diabetes is, and end, they call it end organ damage. It's damaging, that's one of the ways it damages end organs, and like, like your kidneys. But it also, also high cholesterol, or high, excuse me, sugar levels damage the organ itself. So it's not just the vessels, it's the, it's the organs and the, and the eyes that type of thing with the blood sugar levels. It's not just damaging blood vessels, it's actually everything else. And is that damage uh, reparable? No, it's so not repairable. So once it has Once it's happened, there, you can't fix that. Okay. You can't get those so you gotta be preventative. vessels back. Yeah. There are a few people that are doing some interesting work in, in not the smallest capillaries, but the smaller blood vessels where mm -hmm. they dissect them out. They develop a, um, kind of a scar around them and, and on the outside, so they dissect that out. It's microsurgery. It's a very specialized type of treatment. Okay, so I have another completely unrelated question then. Uh, I'm aware of it from women talking about it, although I think men have it as well. When you get these huge veins on the side of your leg mm -hmm. and you can go to have them stripped out, I mean, they're painful, uh, mm -hmm. or you can use saline things and have them dissolved and so on. Is that connected to this conversation or is that a totally different thing? It's a totally different thing. Okay. Arteries take your oxygenated blood, okay? It's already gone through your lungs, takes oxygen to 
your organs, whether they be close to your heart or at your feet. Uh -huh. But arteries away from the heart, mm -hmm. veins bring the blood back. Right. So veins are thin walled vessels, not thick, and they don't, arteries kind of, kind of push. Like a main highway versus a back road. Well, yes, but it's a very big back road. Veins are larger than arteries, mm -hmm. and they're f kind of floppy. So they, they don't have the muscular area in the wall of the vessel. They have like valves. They have to work against gravity most of the time. Okay. Okay. So once the artery brings the blood to your tissues with force from your heart, it has right. to get back this way. Uh -huh. And so it works against gravity. So it has to come up in your legs and then there's a valve that holds it and then it pushes up and that's a lot with that's with the movement of your muscles. Yeah. That's why we want you to walk around, we want you to to keep keep active, keep your exercising because that pushes all of this blood back up into your legs, into your uh, vena cava, back to your heart. So all of these veins have these these valves where well, the valves yeah. get old. Yeah. The valves back up. It's like having it's like having a dam that stops the blood flow. So you get a lake of old blue blood that's not oxygenated in your legs. Mm -hmm. And then it seeps out and into just... your legs and you get swollen. Okay. So it's not getting the oxygenated blood there. It's getting it back to the heart. So it's like a, a high pressure hydraulic system that's just pumping itself yeah, back up. Right. It has to work against gravity. Just think how hard that is. And just so, think that, how but, so that's smart not directly <laughs> related to like smoking or obesity or exercise? It's it's related to smoking because smoking thins the walls of all your vessels, whether they be arteries or veins. It makes okay. them weaker and all the connective tissue makes your face fall, gives you more gives you more um, wrinkles. It damages your connective tissue all over your body. So smoking, smoking you see that smoker's face. Very right? bad for you. Very yeah. bad. So um, so in that way it damages veins. And if you don't walk around, you see really big people who are just sitting God love them sitting in wheelchairs and they don't move all day. I mean, not because they're paralyzed, because it's too much of an effort yeah. to move. Well, they're going to get blood clots because yeah. blood clots happen generally in the veins. Okay? okay, that's where a blood clot happens, and the and it's in the vein. It goes back to your heart and into your lungs by going through the veins. If they don't move, it just collects all this blood. When blood sits still, it makes so a is clot. That phlebitis. Well, phlebitis is is when it see when the blood seeps into the tissue and it gets infected. Uh, it's, it's, it's backed up so much, the pressure's so high, it seeps into the tissue and makes you all swollen. Because it's Richard Nixon's birthday and he used to have phlebitis and was treated for that a lot. It is Richard Nixon's birthday. Segway, yeah. <laughs> really, I didn't have that on my Speaking calendar. Speaking of erectile dysfunction. <laughs> in, any case, in any case, it's not really, um, what we're talking about is not really about um, the veins, it's more about the arteries. Okay. Okay. Yes. In fact, to get an erection, you have to get blood in there and then cut the flow to of, hold it in To hold spot. it in there. Yeah. So the veins can't be releasing the, uh, the blood flow out of the penis for it to stay erect. Right. Because when we get to the segment on treatments, I mean, one of the treatments is a pump. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. a plastic tube that you set over your <laughs> penis and set a, a seal and then you pump it to pull the blood into that, artificially force the mm -hmm. blood to come in to the To come penis. in and not go back out. Yeah, not mm -hmm. go back out because you've got it pinched off. Right. Yeah. It's like a tourniquet. Exactly. It doesn't sound fun to me. I, but it <laughs> takes a lot of, I mean, no, it's sort that of, would be, it's not about being in the mood. Then. <laughs> no, it can't be unless you find that to be a toy or something. Yeah. But um, in any case, so we've gone through low, testos or low testosterone and then uh, narrowing of the blood vessels, diabetes, and how that works in a way. And then we, we haven't talked about other kinds of medicines that men sometimes have to take. Right. There, there like, like are beta blockers. Beta blockers sometimes you have to take for blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's there are some other drugs. There's one blood pressure medicine I see all the time called lisinopril. Lisinopril tends to give you ED and so does beta blockers. So if you're on one the specifically what, so that's lisinopril. A catch 22 for a guy then. If I you know. have to take lisinopril because you're worried about blood pressure in terms of heart or stroke Having issues. Having high blood pressure. Then that may then cause you not to be able to have sex. Right. And that's not the primary issue for your internist, although they should be thinking about that. Right. But lisinopril is, is the is a big deal in terms of, they use that all the time because it's cheap. But there are other high blood pressure medicines that don't have that effect. Right. Benicar is the one I usually suggest. 
because that's the one I know doesn't cause that. Mm -hmm. And so because I know that that one's okay and it also works well for blood pressure, I usually have people go on Benicar. And, and for most men, they'd be interchangeable? I mean, one, one yes. is as good as the other, works as yeah, well? Yeah, they work as well. It's just that Benicar is more expensive. It's not generic yet. Ah. And so that's usually the issue is the cost. I suspect many men, given the choice, would pay the extra amount. Well, they're spending the it on Viagra and other the insurance things. insurance companies not necessarily would. Right, right. But so, if you do the trade yeah. of how much Viagra costs, and sometimes you have to pay for that yourself. Yeah. So... Um, so that, that's the case. Some people who take amphetamines, mm -hmm. because to get an erection, you have to dilate your arteries, remember? And uh, amphetamines make your vessels Like constrict. ADD medicine? Yeah. And sometimes so, that makes... So again, a, a focusing issue, a concentration right. issue, a functionality issue, but it may also then contribute to an erection issue. Right. But wow, those are less likely... That's less likely to cause uh, ED than the blood pressure. Medicines. You can either think about it and not do it, yeah. or you can <laughs> not think about it but do it. Uh, Have it. Didn't follow. Uh, I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, my ADD, ADD is running gotcha. wild. <laughs> so, um, one of the uh, there's two other things that cause that can cause this, or can cause besides the the things we've listed, and one is. Um, Peroni's disease. I have a neighbor who complains that he has that. Shh, don't talk about your neighbor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I never heard of it. Peroni's disease. Anyway. Peroni's disease. He's is, almost proud of the fact that he has it. Well, he tells everybody. Yeah. So um, it's, a, it's a scarring of the penis so that it is constricted by scar tissue. An so interior that interior scarring. Yes, interior yeah. scarring so that the penis is kind of off to the side and it, it just can't become erect. And it's very difficult to, to get that treated. In fact, it usually can't be treated. Hmm. So that that's something that you would need. Once you have it. Once you have it, it's very hard to. Yeah. And, what and causes it's it? It's inflammation, infection, uh, or trauma. Ow. I know. Doesn't that sound awful? So that's, that's another thing, and that's kind of a completely different reason to have ED. Sometimes people are treated with Viagra to try to get it to straighten out, but that's a painful process. Mm -hmm. So a urologist would know more about that than I do because I don't treat that. Okay. And then the last thing is dehydration. Some, some of my patients come in, they've got their testosterone and it's 1,200 and they're, they're like so happy, they feel good, but they still can't have an erection. I'm like, well, tell me about your day. You know, what do you do during your day? Well, mm -hmm. they work outside, they sweat. They, they, they're always working. The only thing they drink during the day is coffee, mm -hmm. no water. They're dehydrated by the time they come home and they want to have sex and then... The well, it's amazing how many full. people think they're drinking <laughs> fluids like coffee yeah. that actually dehydrate, dehydrate them. you. It goes right through and takes out more water with it. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually men are going to need about 11 glasses of water, eight wow. ounce glasses of water. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's their bodies are bigger. They need more than we do. So they, and if they're working outside, you have to add some more ounces. Replace lost water right. through sweat and evaporation, but also to clean out the cells and the toxins. To right, because because you're you're breaking down muscle tissue and a lot of other things when you're yeah. working outside. So you also need to replace some of the salt and the potassium that you're sweating. Electrolytes. In electrolytes. So yeah. in any case, that is, that's like the last reason that I find. Right. Okay, so out of all of these things, there's so many different reasons. I sometimes send people for blood flow studies I sometimes send, you know, to, to a just, urologist. To a urologist. Yeah. Well, first they have to go to a urologist before they see me generally. Mm -hmm. And then we try the test, we do the testosterone, and then we go back through all of these different steps. But I check for diabetes on the first. So, so that's if they're presenting concern and coming to you is about erections? Right. If they're, if they're coming to you for other introductory reasons, mm -hmm. then you don't necessarily send them to a urologist. I used to, but now I've, I've, I've started just having their primary doctor see them. And okay. make sure that everything's everything else is functioning. Yeah. So it's a it's a fascinating checklist process just in terms of looking at the physical mechanical issues that cause men to have erectile dysfunction. Uh, there are other component processes that we want to talk about, the psychological issues and some of the treatment issues. So we'll hope you come back for our next conversation when we'll talk about those things. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube.
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.